What up, what up, what up, what up? It's your boy Ron, man. I'm back with another video. This is Trigger Reactions. How you guys doing today? Uh, if you're new to the channel, welcome, welcome. Go on and subscribe. Uh, go check out some of my old content, man. I'm sure you'll definitely be a part of the family shortly. But, hey guys, look, man. We're back with another video. Um, Russell Brand. Russell Brand. Uh, he's been lighting it up the last few weeks. And he recently went to Tucker Carlson and Fox News again. I don't know if you know their history, but their history, uh, Russell Brand is a, what you say, far right or far left progressive. Uh, I agree with some of the things he stands for and some things I'm just, you know, traditional to core about. But he went to Fox News. He spoke with Tucker Carlson and a few others. A few of the hosts over there at Fox News. And uh, he's going to talk about his experience. And um, I'm curious to see what happened and, you know, hear his thoughts on it. So let's get right into it, guys. I went on Tucker Carlson and Greg Gutfield's Fox News show leading the neoliberal establishment to attack me for being a right-wing conspiracy theorist. But is it necessary to have new conversations? And who is it that's interested in censorship now? Is it the left or is it the right? Hello there, you six million awakening wonders. Thanks for joining me on this voyage to truth and freedom, which will involve new alliances, new conversations, new ways for peripheral voices to attack centralized establishment authoritarian powers, which is exactly why I was appearing on Fox News and having conversations with other commentators and pundits from across the political spectrum. The controversy was stirred up by my appearance on shows like Tucker Carlson, Greg Gutfield, I spoke to Ben Shapiro, also numerous right-wing commentators. You'll remember if you're my age, that right wing just used to be one of the things that a person could be and wasn't automatically associated with things like fascism and racism and all the ideas I think fundamentally we're agreed are bad ideas wherever we stand politically. So what is the agenda of the neoliberal establishment media? What do they want spoken about? What do they not want spoken about? Because let me tell you up front, what I learned from my conversations with figures from the conservative right, let's call them, is that there is a new willingness to form new alliances in order to be able to attack centralized establishment authoritarian power i i think that's always been there i think the more people really got into because uh, i'm not gonna lie politics has become just like everything that's introduced to the internet you know it just became the thing you know, because I wasn't, when I was 18 to like 23, 25, 27, I wasn't really paying attention to politics. I voted based off of what my family or whoever just, Democrat basically. But I didn't really look into it and understood certain things, certain laws, certain policies. Um, and I did it once I became, you know, uh, I would say informed. I went and done my research, and I began to, and, and certain people, of course, definitely, I wouldn't say influenced, but definitely uh, opened my eyes to certain things. Now, yes, I think there's always room to be uh, inclusive, and us, and unity, like, we have to all find a median, right? I talked about this in my last video. Just finding a median, you know, a willingness to say, okay, look, this is what I'm on, or these are the policies I want in place. Let's keep the same ground, which is family, business, or how I make my money, and definitely we're against authoritative, centralized government and institutions that dictate everything. That's always it. We're against that. It's always going to be the people, for the people, we the people. So, no, man, um, yeah, I think uh, it's at a, more than ever, it's at an all-time high of us, like, really seeing, like, wow, they playing with the American people. Because both, like, especially Biden showed us that. A lot of Democrats, a lot of my Democrat friends were like, man, Trump wasn't that bad. He actually like, made better decisions and stood up to a lot of things. And he was actually a patriot for the country. So, 
it's good to see that we all can come together and have like a agreement or a, a common ground. I.e., explicitly, people that are conservative and right wing are willing to have a truce with and alliances with people that are really progressive. They are, in fact, willing to accept that the only way forward for us is to have more democratic power and autonomy in our communities. And mm -hmm. that the price for having autonomy and authority in your own community, mm -hmm. and I mean power that's achieved democratically, is to allow other people to have their own power and authority in their own communities. However, centralised power wants, of course, a centralised, authoritative, institutionalised power to dictate what is possible and benefits from ongoing cultural conflagration. Exactly. Exactly. A centralized power that dictates and controls what is possible never understood the people because we believe there's nothing. <laughs> that's, not, that's impossible. Everything's possible. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, right? One nation under God. So the people always understood that. Change can happen. It can. We've seen it. I think we got too far from that and we need to get back to it reason I go on these various shows is in order to have conversations like this because I believe change is possible. And before I show you these clips, bear in mind that just a few short years ago, I did this at Fox News. This is private property. This bit here? Yes. Whose property is it? The building. Who's, who's the building belong to? It doesn't matter. Oh, it does matter. It doesn't matter. I'll just say it then. Do you want to get arrested? Um, we were hooked on to Sean Hannes' show. Okay. I've always admired Russell Brand's uh, pursuit in truth and just his willingness to, you know, by any means necessary. He's going to get the information, he's going to get the truth, and then he's going to bring it back to the people. I always admired that about him. And then it was cancelled. Can I come up, have a look around, maybe have a look at the studio, touch some stuff? Meet some of the people from the Hannity show. Got a wig outside. Why? Because that's what we want you to do. So, here are some of the moments from the conversations I had, and I want you to ask yourself these questions and let me know in the chat and comments what you think. Do these conversations improve the chances of us forming new power structures and new systems? Who is it that seems to be benefiting from the ongoing culture war? And let me know in the chat and the comments because I'm interested in what you think, and I believe you can handle nuanced thinking. Let's have a look, first of all, at my appearance on Tucker Carlson on Fox News. In this conversation, both Tucker Carlson and I came to it knowing that we would disagree, presumably, about a lot of issues that I, broadly speaking, belong to the, what you might call the cultural left, but he is a conservative person, you might say. We were surprised, in fact, about how many things we agreed upon, I suppose because we both agree with individual and community freedom. There were moments where I gently and respectfully confronted Tucker Carlson around some of the issues where I explicitly disagree with him. For example, the way he's spoken about homelessness in the past, perhaps identity issues, issues of sexuality, and I was surprised, in fact, about how little Tucker Tucker Carlson really cared about regulating the private life of other people. But what I would say... You know, I'm like, yeah, your private life is yours. When you make your private life the public's issue or concern or that's where you got an issue. Like, go be what you want. Don't share it to my children. On a global, grand scale. Like, yeah, nah. They're my children. I don't need your pushed agenda on my children. Especially about your private life. And what you privately do. I don't care about what food you eat. I don't care about your religion, your any of that. That's it. Don't push it on the kids. And there's forums or forums or platforms where we can't talk about these things. Not in front of my underage children. That's it. Today is that what inspired me about this conversation 
is both Tucker Carlson and I are absolutely disenchanted with establishment power, whether it's on the left or the right, that neither of those terms mean anything anymore, that authority and government power has been co-opted by financial interest to such a degree that no one is voting for anything meaningful anymore. Have a look. Yeah. These are them facts that I was going to uh, tell you about, Great. if I may. I hope you will. I certainly shall do my best. I wanted to do it down the barrel. Did you see that? Did you see the, presumpt the presumptiveness of me there, Tucker, to turn straight ahead for my single? A single that frankly wasn't there because this is Tucker Carlson today. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get an ace to a shot. I'm Mr. Brand. Thank you. Look at he directs from the floor. <laughs> Hello, America. <laughs> In the world of energy, you know energy, that we require to do stuff, to move things about, to warm our homes, at least 100 members of Congress own fossil fuel stocks, of which 59 are Republicans and 41 are Democrats. Oh, look, the Republicans are a bit worse. Pharma. Of the $263 million of the pharmaceutical industry spent on lobbying in 2021, it gave 61% to the Democrat Party and 39% to the Republicans. Oh, no, the Democrat Party is a bit worse. Wall Street. In 2022, commercial banks spent over $30 million lobbying Congress. 61% to the Republicans and 39% to the Democrats. Oh, no, look, the Republicans are a bit worse. If you've seen any of the criticism in the neoliberal media, you might think, well, what was it about? Because these are not right with... From those numbers, it shows, like, even with the fossil fuel or just pharmaceuticals, we all, to a degree, are into it. Because, look, if it wasn't, one party would be, like, 100%. Look at, listen to what I'm saying. The end of the day, your bread, your blue. Now, there's some things that the blue and the red are just completely opposites on. Sorry, guys, my lighting. I got to fix that thing. Stay in that tripod. Um, but there's some things blue and red just won't agree on. And that's okay. That's perfectly fine. But there are some things that we do obviously agree on. Fossil fuels, pharmaceuticals, uh, whatever the case may be, whatever those numbers are. So keep that in mind, people. Keep that in mind. Wing talking points. This is anti-establishment, anti-authoritarian, anti-financial corruption rhetoric that everyone should be interested in. So it makes mm. me think that the voices that are attacking me are whether unconsciously or not, supporting establishment power. Let me know in the comments. Let me know in the chat. Let's see what's coming next. Nearly 20% of Congress members, 49 Democrats and 44 Republicans, have been trading shares of companies in industries they are supposed to be overseeing as part of their committee assignment. Each one of these facts indicates a potential solution to the problem that it describes. Don't let members of Congress own stocks at all. Pharma, do not accept lobbying money from the pharmaceutical industry. It's a health industry. The interest should be, as the Hippocratic Oath declares, to do no harm and, get this, maybe even help people. A lot of my time spent thinking, I wish I could pull that. Man, he said a lot there. And I think all of us, when it comes to, especially in 2023, we see that even with the whole jab thing, right? Um, we've seen that more than ever, and I think I love the internet for this, is hmm, maybe it's never been about helping the people. It's about money, and that's what he's talking about. An authoritative structure that's only about Capital gain. Financial gain. And when you have that running the people, it's a problem because all people don't have financial gain. Simple, if we're just going to cut it there. So when you're doing something that's super financially um, uh, 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 prone or risk riskful or just uh, splurging money without the regards of the people who need every penny, there's a problem there. Because you got to cater to these people too. So you're willing to earn a buck than to help someone who's down on their luck. 
Mm. Yo, this video is too long. I don't want to go too far, but I'm going to make part two if you guys tell me to do so. Leave it down in the comments down below. Tell me again, man, your thoughts on this video so far. What do you think? And hopefully, man, you guys can see like what Russell Brand is doing. Um, the fact that he came to speak to some of my favorites, I'm open to hearing this guy a lot more. Um, and I, like I said, I stopped watching him in the uh, recent past because he seemed a little too away from. Uh, that doesn't matter. Uh, we're here today, and I think uh, what I've always wanted was for all of us to have a common ground. Not so against one another based off of our own beliefs, because I understand beliefs. I understand how strong that is and how that drives a human being. I never wanted to disrespect anyone's belief or what they view as important or value to themselves, especially when it comes to politics, government, and uh, just livelihood. So, I appreciate this guy. So, look, guys, I'm going to make part two, man. If you like this video, you already know what to do, man. Hit that thumbs up button down below. Comment down below what I should react to next. And also, if you would like for me to do a part two to this video, let me know, guys. And I'll leave the original video down below as well. Thank you guys for watching. This is Trigger Reaction. I am your boy, Ron, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.